Hello friends, we are now going to look into the session 3 on the topic SAP roles and authorizations. So this session will cover the design to deployment. We have already seen uh, two sessions. Uh, I will just take you, I will do a quick run on the sessions. On the first session, we gave an introduction about the SAP roles and authorizations. We gave, we dis discussed about SE01D, uh, SUIM, how do we check the roles, uh, what are all the comparison of roles, etc. And uh, one of the important subject we touch base was on the SU24, which will help you to find the authorization objects and also how to run SU53. And in session two, we touch base on the different types of roles. What is a single role? What is a composite role? What is a master role or a derived role, etc. We also sh uh, show on a demonstration in both the sessions. And uh, this session is going to be, uh, you know, about the design methodology. So we will not look much into SAP. It will be more about how we will be doing the roles and authorization from the design to deployment. So here is the uh, for our design to deployment. Here you can see I have given the different phases. So what activity we need to do during the blueprint and what is done during the realization and what is done during the go live. As a process, during the blueprint discussion itself, we should capture what are all the transactions which are involved for the particular process number or for the particular blueprint, you know, ID, whatever the way we are going to document it. Like for an example, if I'm going to talk about master data for sales or master data for controlling, master data for maintenance. So all this we have to, you know, cover as part of the business blueprint and all the required transaction level, we have to identify and capture it. Then uh, during the realization phase, we have to first start with the designing of the roles that we call it as a role design. Then we have to create that roles. Then after that, we need to do a role testing. And once the role testing, everything is done, then we need to go for a role deployment. So this is a staggered process, which the flow I have given here. Uh, we will look into details in for every stage. Uh, we will look into in more detail in the upcoming slides so as a first activity during the blueprint we should have captured all the required transaction codes and what are all the organization uh, you know elements that is part of it whether it's a company code or plan so those kinds of things would have been already captured now that will become our input document based on that we need to design the roles okay as a first step so we have not yet created so we need to have a role design document for it so how we will be designing these roles, okay? Now, uh, the naming convention is also one important factor so that through the naming convention, you will be identified what this role is actually doing. Like, let us say, if I'm going to talk about uh, a PP uh, blueprint, then I will give PP underscore BPP number like 100, and then I will give some running serial numbers. And uh, in the role, we will have uh, you know, if it is very country specific, if we are working in a multi-country environment, then we will also bring the indicator for the countries also. Okay, maybe we will give a couple of identifiers for countries. Uh, if it is not related to any country, then uh, it is like we can have the process number and the serial number. Uh, we should also have the identifier uh, very clear so that we will be able to identify whether that role is a single role or a derived role or a composite role. So these kind of things, everything, we have to put it during the role design phase itself so that that particular naming convention will be followed uh, you know, during all the processes. So this role design is a planning phase. Okay, so we have to get all the details in the blueprint and we put up the design. Uh, and uh, some of the projects, uh, you know, create a design document, so which will be kind of a business blueprint for the security consultant. Okay, so that uh, this whole activity will be getting started after the blueprint is over. So that is where the role of the security consultant will start. Now, uh, in the left side, you can see who is responsible. So in terms of the role design and the business blueprint, it is mostly it should be owned by the functional people. Uh, you know with some guidelines from the security but it should be mostly owned by the functional like how many number of roles is required what types of roles etc and all now uh, once this blueprint is there for the uh, roles and authorizations as the security guy will create the roles 
So the roles needs to be created as per the design document there, and they ensure that the complete naming convention are all followed. So once the roles are created, then we need to perform the role testing. Okay, so the role testing is one of the very critical activity, and when we are performing the role testing, we should do uh, two types of testing. One is the positive testing, another one is negative testing. Uh, so this will help you to identify if the roles are performing, uh, you know, behaving as expected. Okay. Now in the positive testing, we will give the, uh, you know, the roles, uh, uh, the values which are configured. Like let us say if there is one derived role and that role has a plant value as thousand. We will give the value thousand and try to test it. And the role should allow us to create. Maybe if, if it is for metal master creation, or if it is for a block metal creation, or a vendor creation, for the particular organizational element and with the authority object values, it should allow to create. So that is the objective of the positive testing. And in the negative testing, we will try to force errors. When we try to force error, means the role would have been created for a particular plant. Let us say the role is created for a particular plant. But you will try to test, execute the function with an, another plant. Let's say the, uh, you will give it for plant as a 2000 and it should not allow you to create that material or a vendor. Okay. And you, are, uh, you will be, you are expected to get an authorization error. So this is where your negative testing has to happen. This is for the negative testing should happen. Okay. Now, uh, this whole testing is a, you know, by and large is a, a big activity depending on the number of roles you are having and you know number of authority objects you are having so it is always better like how you do a unit testing or integration testing this role testing is properly documented so you need to have a test case document which will tell you this test case is for which type of blueprint number and uh, what is the roles you are going to test it and what are the test ids that you are going to use for it and then you need to list out what are all the steps as per every transaction code you need to list out what are all the test steps you are going to perform and what is your uh, you know expected result what is your actual result and what is this test status whether it is pass or fail etc uh, so this is where uh, this, this is how we, it will help you to uh, completely uh, you know test the number of roles that we have created uh, depending on the complexity you know like the number of roles if it is multi country rollout uh, with all this this planning should be done and this whole cycle should be properly managed like if there are any issues then they have to be logged you know that has to be the remediation has to be done and retesting all should be done so like uh, how we are doing a unit testing or we are doing an integration testing this also needs to be done uh, as part of that one so the role testing also we should do it and very importantly if the roles are ready uh, like if we are working on an implementation project so uh, during the UAT, so like during the user acceptance testing, so we should try to, I mean, we should make it mandatory that we will work with the roles that are created for the, uh, you know, for the deployment. So like the go live, uh, how we will be using the roles, the same type, we should configure the users with the exact roles that they will be doing. So before that, they, I mean, this positive and negative testing should be completed. And these roles and authorization should be used for the user acceptance testing. Uh, if it was a other type of project, like if it was an upgrade project or if it was a migration project, so uh, you know it is very important that we give some timelines and uh, we buffer this activities. I mean, uh, as part of your WPS or as part of your work list items, we need to you know bring in these. Uh, uh, positive, negative, or this uh, role testing as also a primary criteria as a work element, and we need to buffer the schedule or buffer our activities for this one also. So once this positive, negative testing is all done, and uh, if we don't have anything, I mean we should make sure that all the uh, errors are all fixed, and then it should be ready for the deployment. So the deployment will be, if it is implementation, this will be used for the go live part. If it was a migration or if it was an upgrade project, again during the go live, they should ensure that this is all, uh, you know, utilized properly. And also, if there is any changes that is requested post uh, deployment, 
there should be proper change logs why it is being done etc see uh, this is very important because uh, current in the current working scenario many of the companies are trying to adapt the you know sods they are trying to use the grc compliance and there are a lot of uh, you know audit requirements if they are having iso audit or system audits there is already you know the auditors are raising lot of concerns like whether checker approval is properly followed and uh, the system controls how we are deploying what is it and etc so roles and authorization helps you to define the sod the separation of duties very well um, that, uh, that is why this is very very important that we we you know we we have a good design and then uh, you know we create it properly test it and then we deploy it uh, so this is what i wanted to share uh, in this session which is the design to deployment uh, this is a bigger subject but uh, you know in the context of me you know bringing awareness on the subject i'm keeping it very small and if you want any further information feel free to reach to me uh, you know in whatever the uh, source you are uh, you know getting this data then we can uh, uh, discuss and detail it out uh, the next i will try to do some more sessions on this subject i will keep you posted